Yeah, sometimes I have folks ask me, uh, especially you know, some ham friends and things like that, they're saying, you know, I want to pick up an analog scope for doing some stuff in my you know, my bench and just experimenting with circuits and repairing things. You know, how much bandwidth do I need? And I usually answer, you know, as much as you can afford. And I uh, say, well, I'm just working on, you know, radios or amplifiers and, you know, I might be working with just audio circuits and things like that. So, you know, can I get away with, you know, a 10 or 20 megahertz scope? And I say, well, maybe, maybe not. So in playing around here on the bench, I uh, came up with an example to kind of illustrate, uh, you know, why you might need more bandwidth than you think. Um, it's a good idea to have. So I've got this, uh, this little simple phase shift oscillator circuit that I put together. That's a single transistor. Um, you know, simple biasing here to bias the transistor up, create some gain, and then a phase shift network to create some positive feedback to cause this thing to oscillate. And this oscillates, creates a, a reasonably good audio oscillator at, uh, in this case, about 2.9 kilohertz with the values that I've got shown here. Okay, I've got the circuit built uh, right here. Uh, and kind of see, uh, you know, there's the transistor, the caps, the resistors, etc. I'm probing with this uh, probe right here, uh, right at the the output. Uh, right here over onto the scope. And if we take a look at the scope, there's the output. Um, so uh, it's you know, a couple of volts peak to peak. And if we look, that's 100 microseconds per division. So that's so in the neighborhood of 2.9 kilohertz. So everything looks pretty good. And um, But what I found was I've, I've got the, the scope dialed down. You can see this little BWL down here. That says I've got the bandwidth limit turned on. If you look over at the front panel of the scope, We've got the bandwidth button dialed in here, and if we look carefully, you might be able to see that says 20 megahertz. So basically, this is acting like a 20 megahertz scope, even though the, the full bandwidth of the scope is 350 megahertz. So everything looks kind of good. And if I turn the bandwidth limit off, okay, well, it doesn't look much different. The line gets a little fatter because there's a lot more bandwidth now. We've got 350 megahertz of bandwidth, so I could be getting some noise. So that little growth and fatness of the line there could just be to be due to excess noise um, that we're filtering out we go down to 20 megahertz bandwidth could be maybe not so uh, let's look at uh, another node in the circuit instead of looking at the base or excuse me the collector uh, here where the output is I'm going to look over here at the base the input to the transistor so let's move the uh, probe here over to there okay so now we've moved that over let's go over to the scope and let's bring crank the sensitivity up here a little bit and uh, let's see, play it by triggering a little bit here. Let's knock that down there, and uh, here we go. There it is. So there's the base drive uh, going into the, the circuit, right? Everything looks good, but I've got the bandwidth limit turned on. Now let's turn the bandwidth limit off, and look at that. I got these big, fuzzy, kind of almost heart shaped uh, you know, things going on here that when I have a 20 megahertz uh, mode here, you just can't see. So what that tells me is that there's some spurious oscillation going on at these portions of the waveform here um, that's well above the 20 megahertz bandwidth because the 20 megahertz bandwidth is knocking it out. But that's real, okay? There's, real, there's a real oscillation going on there. And that's probably contributing to the little fuzziness we saw in the output, but uh, that's really going on. Now how high is that frequency that we're looking at here? Well, what we can do is we can kind of expand in on that and look at that with the scope here. So I'm just going to use the uh, delayed time base here, okay, to kind of pick out a, a small portion of that waveform. Okay, you see the little dot I'm moving, uh, moving around back and forth. I'm going to move that into that portion of the waveform. Let's expand that out a little bit. So now I'm looking at about five nanoseconds per division on that expanded portion of the trace, that little piece right there. I'm expanding out here, and I'm looking at that five nanoseconds per division, I've got about a five nanosecond period. Of that, uh, with that, of that oscillation that's in there, oh, 5 nanosecond period, that's about a 200 megahertz oscillation. So even though this circuit that we've built is a 2.9 kilohertz audio oscillator, there's, during portions of this uh, the cycle, when this thing's going through, it's singing at over two, close to 200 megahertz. Well, you know, could that cause a problem? Well, I mean, it, you might create emissions and things like that that could interfere with other portions of the circuit. You could dissipate extra power, you could upset bias of other circuits, you can couple into other things. And how would you know this if you just had a 20 megahertz scope, everything would look normal, right? But with that, with a wider bandwidth, you can actually go see that. So, um, so that's where it's beneficial sometimes to have more bandwidth than you think you need. 
And uh, turns out uh, it's a pretty simple fix for this thing, but uh, part of the problem is that we're, we're in these, these solderless breadboards, which are great for pr prototyping circuits, but they've got tons of parasitic capacitance, and they've got inductance, and they've got all kinds of coupling. They're really not great for anything that has the potential <laughs> for doing high-frequency stuff. The other thing that uh, is just kind of a basic thing of when you're building transistor circuits is you want to kind of have some kind of a lossy impedance in at least two of the legs. And uh, and really, right now, we've really got it only in one. So if we throw some resistance in, in series with the base here, we can kind of squash that isol os oscillation. So right now, you can see it's kind of oscillating there, like we were looking at here before. Uh, I'm going to stick a little bit of resistance uh, right in, in this portion of the circuit here, and all I have to do is move uh, this capacitor leg over here. I've already got it on the board. So let's see if I can do this. And stick that back in there where she belongs. Stick that lead there. And then get that lead guy in there. And now if we go back and look at this thing here, uh, let's go back up to and our normal look at the, uh, the base here. There it is. So there's our base drive. Now it's all nice and clean. Okay, no oscillation. Whether I've got the 20 megahertz bandwidth on or not, everything's nice and clean. I've cleaned up the oscillation from that circuit. It doesn't exist anymore, but that's something that we wouldn't have found at all if uh, we didn't have uh, extra bandwidth on the scope. So, uh, again, the, the bottom line is, depend, no matter what you're doing, it's always nice to have that extra bandwidth because you never know when a simple little circuit like that could uh, start singing at some really high frequency. And, uh, you really have no way of understanding it, seeing it, and then fixing it without having the tools to actually see it. So that's uh, one thing to be careful of with any tool, no matter what it is, whether it's a scope or anything else, is understand what the limitations are. Okay, if you've got a 20 megahertz scope or a 50 megahertz scope or something like that, or a digital, even a digital scope, whatever it might be, you know, you've got to understand what the limitations of those tools are so that uh, they don't lie to you. I mean, the scope wasn't really lying to me, but it was hiding to me, hiding the fact from me that uh, I had this 200 megahertz spurious oscillation in there. Um, so uh, without thinking, if I didn't know that I had the bandwidth limit turned on or if I didn't have a wider bandwidth scope, I never would have seen that. So uh, always uh, have another way of looking at your circuits and things like that and, uh, and you know, make sure you apply some common sense to what you're looking at. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed that and uh, have fun with your scopes.